according to current statistics, one of three individuals in this room, ladies and gentlemen, will be diagnosed with cancer. And according to the current statistics, one of four will die. The question is, can we change the statistics? David and Yossi touched many points how we may prevent disease. I would like to guide you through the past, the present, and the future of cancer treatment. So cancer is a disease caused by, by proliferating cells, cells which multiply in an uncontrolled fashion. When it's locally confined, it can be treated by surgery alone, in most cases. But when it's spreading to many, many, uh, uh, many regions of the body, it's difficult to treat. The standard treatment of cancer is chemotherapy. Chemotherapy kills proliferating cells, proliferating cancer cells as proliferating healthy cells. Therefore, chemotherapy is associated with many side effects. The question is, can we avoid toxicity during cancer treatment? Yes, we can, at, a at least to a certain, certain amount. In 2001, there, is a, there was the advent of the targeted therapies, magic bullets. They work like cruise ma ma missiles, uh, identifying the tumor cells in the body, killing them without inducing side effects. Herceptin and Glivex are examples for such, such drugs. How they work? They, they address, they target, target molecules on, on tumor cells and kill these tumor cells, thereby, thereby, thereby aiming to, to get rid of the cancer without destroying the normal tissues. The question, the question is how well this type of drugs work. And this is, this is an example, how, how we measure the effectivity of drugs. The effectivity of novel drugs are tested by, by analyzing the, the, by comparing the drug with the standard uh, treatment, in this case, chemotherapy. We measure the progression of disease. That means the worsening of disease over time. Ideally, a drug would, would stop the, the progression in all patients over time. But this is not the case. What happens is that targeted drugs address medical need by delaying the cancer progress, but they are, in most cases, not able to cure cancer. That means high medical need remains. This was the case, so the, the idea of chronic cancer disease, not uh, being able to, to cure cancer, was the case until 2013, the advent of cancer immunotherapy. The idea of cancer immunotherapy is to coach immune cells to fight cancer. It was known for more than 30 years that immune cells can recognize cancer cells and can destroy cancer cells. But only now it's possible to make drugs that exploit these mechanisms. The exciting aspects about cancer immunotherapies are two things. First, we see dramatic responses in patients with advanced tumors, in a proportion of patients with advanced tumors. Second is that some patients, after stopping of treatment, remain stable for years. So there is hope for, for, for cure. The first drugs are approved, and many are in development for many types of cancers. If we look to, to the survival, survival curves of such treatments, you can see that, the, uh, that the, there is a substantial medical need which is addressed. Cancer immunotherapy delays cancer progression and cures some pa uh, patients. But we still did not arrive in an ideal world. Patients still dying, and most patients are not responding to such treatment. We know that for most cancer treatments, only about 20 5% of ca cancer patients respond. 75% of patients do not respond. Personal, personalized medicine, as means today, is 
is identifying such patients by diagnostic test prior of treatment and only treating those patients which, which uh, would, would uh, uh, respond to treatment. And many patients don't even get this type of targeted drugs. So we have to tell these patients there's no drug available for treatment of your cancer. What is the key challenge in treating cancer? I would like to shortly introduce the, the key challenges. It's a little bit science, easy to understand. Cancer is caused by mutations. Mutations are changes in the genetic information of cells. They change this change of genetic information, changes the behavior of cells, resulting in uncontrolled proliferation. The challenge, the, the challenge in, in cancer is that cancers accumulate many mutations over years, up to several thousand. The second challenge is that every tumor cell in an individual patient is slightly different, with different type of mutations. That means if a cancer drug is able, able to, to attack one type of cell, another cell, uh, cell type may go out. Cancer has an enormous genetical, uh, genetical diversity and plasticity. And the second problem is that every individual, even with the same type of cancer, has only 3% overlap uh, in their mutation profile. The current treatments focus to try to identify drugs that address this overlap and ignore 97% of cancer mutations, of individual cancer mutations. The out-of-the-box uh, question would be, can we develop drugs that address all mutations? Can we simply target all type of the whole clonality of cancer cells? The immune system is as genetically diverse and adaptable as cancer. Every human has 1,000 billion cells which are able to fight cancer. And we would like to exploit the cells. What is the idea? So we, we take the tumor of individual cancer patients, we identify all individual cancer mutations, this is the mutanome, and then we make a vaccine which induces immune cells, which coaches immune cells to recognize these mutations, thereby allowing to attack, attack all types of cancer cells. This is the concept. Can we design, design a drug which is based on the genetic information of an indiv individual patient. So if you ask, if you ask Craig Venter, which is one, who is one of the pioneers of uh, genome sequencing, he will say this will never happen. Well, sometimes it's good to get a second opinion. So we created, with like-minded minded scientists and entrepreneurs and investors, we created company dedicated to the development of individualized treatments. The idea is to develop one drug for one patient, the next drug for the next patient. So in several years of research, interdisciplinary research, we established the approach. I will show you how this works. It starts with getting blood sample and tumor tissue from, in, from individual patient. This blood sample and the tumor sample are sequenced and, and the normal, normal genetic information and the cancer genetic information are compared to identify all mutations in the cancer. This is called cancer mutanome. Then we developed algorithms allowing us to make sense of this more than four terabyte of data, allowing us to identify those mutations which are most important for a successful vaccine. Then we prepare a a vaccine. We take, we synthesize the mutations of the patient, link, uh, connect them by linkers, and, and integrate them into a synthetic messenger RNA vaccine. Messenger RNA is a natural molecule which is used by cells to tra uh, for transient transport of information. So it's ideally suited to inform the immune system. The genetic vaccine is prepared in two days and then transported to the hospital where it's applied by the, by the doctor. 
May I have the video? So how how this work? Here is the mutation which is confirmed by, by sequencing. We use the mutation to prepare a, a synthetic RNA vaccine, and the synthetic RNA vaccine is used as a drug. We use this, this drug for injection of the vaccine into the lymph node of a, of a cancer patient. The drug is taken up by dendritic cells, which are the the communication centers of the immune system. They instruct T cells, which leave the lymph node, go to, to the tumor site, and kill tumor cells. This is the mechanism of action. So we are now in clinical testing. We, uh, we have this approach in melanoma. We treated eight patients. It is feasible. We can, do individ we can prepare individual vaccines. They seem to be safe. Most importantly, we see that we are able to instruct the immune system to, to, to mount immune responses against mutations. At the moment, we cannot say whether this, this approach is clinically active. It will take several years until we have the answer. But we believe that this type of individualized treatments will become the future of cancer medicine. They, they are characterized by three aspects, individualized diagnostic, individualized drug design, and customized therapy. Every patient gets another drug. The digital representation of such treatments is, is based on communication. Get the information from the tumor, interpret the results, prepare a synthetic message, send the message to inform the immune system. The immune system is like a social community, thousand, thousand times bigger than Facebook. We are able to communicate with the immune system by bringing the message to dendritic cells. These are the communication centers of the immune system. The dendritic cells take up the message and, and, uh, and, and instruct immune cells to fight against cancer. Will this type of approach be affordable? Yes, we believe it will be affordable. Why? Because it is based on all of today's innovation. Economy of scale, automation processes, big data processes, novel business models based on individualized healthcare will help to reduce the cost and the time for development of such vaccines. Today, we need about three months to prepare an individualized vaccine for a patient. It costs about $200,000. In 10 years, we believe we can make it in a few days for a few thousand bucks. But most importantly, this, I, this type of treatment changes the answer we can give patients. There's no drug available for treatment of your cancer, but we can make one for you. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>